I went to the University of Toronto as an undergraduate. I don't really feel that that science and biology were the most important tools that I learned as an undergrad that I carry forward into my adult life. Really it was how to navigate the very busy life in Toronto, the very big network of people at the university. Not everybody has a linear path. I did a bachelor's degree, graduated into a recession, a master's degree, graduated into a recession a second time, ran my own consulting company. All the experiences that I've had along the way have, have helped shape me and, and, and helped me do my job better. The Joe and Kara Finley Center, they are one of the biggest supporters that we have in terms of a head and a cancer research program. Uh, one of the things I like the most about my research is really the ability to change the way patients are potentially treated to really make an impact on uh, the world. My grandparents owned a farm and they had beautiful flowers and plants that were growing there in tropical paradise, obviously, and I always was fascinated by how plants grew and how they looked all so different. So I think it's kind of what started my appreciation of the natural world. What I did really learn in my undergrad, which I think was critical for my development, and I, and I think would be very helpful for, for undergrads now, is to try new things. So if you really want to pursue a scientific career, you should try different labs, you should try different organisms. Like I said, from my experience, I, I worked on C. elegans, um, Drosophila, and Arabidopsis, so you know, three model systems. And you have to try to find different approaches that you might like, biochemistry, molecular biology, genetics, whatever. Try the techniques as much as you can. One of the skills I think that you develop as an undergrad is learning to network with people realize that you need to be able to reach out to various people to help you do the best science possible. You don't do science alone in a little lab like a lot of people might think. You actually need, especially as, as techniques and tools in science evolve, you need to work in a very collaborative fashion and that it's really developing networks and social skills to be able to do that that's I think very critical and something that I still use today. I think the most challenging thing about studying life sciences is that it encompasses a lot of different skills. I mean, you have to be able to learn and adapt and apply lecture material, uh, learn and apply textbook material. You have to gain a number of different uh, practical laboratory skills. You have to write well, save for grants, for lab reports, and you also have to be able to present uh, quite well through oral presentations and poster presentations. I think that one of the most important skills to develop as an undergrad is the ability to handle rejection and take disappointment in stride and use it as an opportunity to evaluate yourself and get better. And then what's up for the summer? In terms of discovering a suitable career path, my main advice is for undergrads to do what they're really interested in, what they're very passionate about. I know that that seems kind of vague, and that's the advice I give my children, and they find it kind of frustrating too, but it really does work out. Exploring your passions in terms of the courses they take and finding job opportunities that expand your horizons in that area, then I think you start to get a sense of which direction you want to go. There is a tool online called My IDP, uh, which it was developed for graduate students and postdoctoral fellows, and I know that my graduate students have used it, and they think that it would also be useful for undergrads. It helps you sort of assess what your interests are and what are some potential uh, directions to go. I think if you've always known what you want to do and you go for it with purpose, you know, that's great. Certainly when I was an undergrad, I envied people like that because I was not like that at all. And I think many undergrads maybe have, you know, started out thinking they know what they want to do, but maybe, you know, partway through first year, maybe in second year, they're no longer so sure. I think this is a really uncomfortable and stressful state to be in, but I think it's really normal. It's a sign that you're, you're ready to push the boundaries of what you thought you wanted to, a university degree to be about and what you thought your future career might end up being. Although students in cell and systems biology related programs learn a lot of content related to cell and molecular biology or, or cell physiology, for example, uh, it's not necessarily the case that the, that is the material they're going to be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis in their future job. One of the biggest challenges that students have when they're about to graduate or after they've graduated, they're looking for careers 
where they match the content that they've learned in an undergraduate education with the content that they're expecting to immerse themselves in in some future position. But students in our programs also learn about communicating uh, the knowledge that they've learned. They learn about uh, researching problems. Um, they learn about uh, evidence-based decision-making. And I think instead of trying to match content with content, they need to match uh, the skills that they've learned in an undergraduate education. And so students that have skills in how to research uh, questions, how to uh, develop ideas and, and, uh, and defend them, um, uh, those sorts of skills are going to be you know, tremendous for, for their ability to succeed. Undergraduates can help prepare for postgrad life by really taking advantage of all the opportunities they have while they're undergraduate students. Go to your program office, your registrar's office, the Health and Wellness Center. Make the most of your time here and of those services. Participate in all the fantastic uh, extracurricular opportunities that we have because it gets them out of the classroom, but it also helps them to develop networks and contacts that they may use in their postgrad life. A good example is something like Brain Awareness Day at U of T. I've known students who've um, volunteered in that program and then actually um, secured positions in the parent organization uh, of that group or used their contacts to get interviews for postgrad uh, job opportunities. And also that cohort of students that you meet um, that becomes your network once you've graduated. Your, your friends, essentially, also, I still meet with my undergrad friends, but also those are people that you go to in your professional life when you are wanting to collaborate on projects in your job, or perhaps you're, you want a network to find a different position. These are people that you can go to. So you get a, a lot of advantages. And I, I think also students see when they participate in extracurricular activities that they're really applying what they're learning. This is a time where really you prove yourself to yourself, but again, have to manage your affairs properly, which means work hard, boost your intelligence, and prove to yourself what is your capacity. And you'll be surprised, as an individual, how much capacity, how much intelligence you have. You can change the world. Throughout your undergraduate uh, career, um, you will have disappointment and rejection, whether it's in marks, with exams, with tests, with scholarship applications, with career opportunities, or maybe even your social life. But I think it's very important not just to move beyond that and get, it, get over it uh, very quickly, but to use it as an opportunity to improve and to get better and to move forward. I was always very interested in uh, nature. And so as a young person, one example for me was trail riding on my, my bike. And, finding uh, new trail systems. Just the uh, discovery of a new trail system and then seeing what that opens up to in the future and finding all this interesting stuff afterwards, I find that that's uh, very similar to, uh, to scientific research. This is the place where uh, new discoveries are made. Just the ability to study any idea that you want to, why not just go for it, give it your all. The important thing is to and to come up with goals and, and, and go after them and, and uh, do the best you can, work hard, and, and don't be as afraid of failing and just realize that you probably will have to change plans, adapt to things over time, and, and that's okay and then that's normal, but, but you have to give it a shot.